Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining our nice APW webinar. My name is Yumiko Asayama, manager of Japan Water Forum and also coordinator of the Asia Pacific Water Forum. Today, we welcome Ms. Mega McLeod, CEO of Alliance for Water Stewardship in Asia Pacific. She will talk about the engaging industry in sustainable water management through water stewardship. Today, we will firstly deliver opening remarks by our governing council chair, Mr. Ravi Narayaran, followed by his opening remarks. Ms. Megan will make presentation about 25 minutes. Followed by her presentation, we will have a Q&A session. Firstly, the Q&A will be organized between our governing council chair, Ravi, and also Megan. Then we will uh, uh, have a uh, response to your question and comment. Uh, so during the webinar, please add any your comments and question on using the chat function. Then we will collect uh, your questions through the chat box during the webinar. Then we will also ask, uh, welcome asking questions by raising hand after we is, uh, completed the response to all the questions in chat box. So, but we might not have enough time to respond to all the questions. In that case, Ms. Megan and we respond to your question by email. So please raise any question and comments on the chat box. Thank you so much. Today, uh, we are also uh, uh, Webinar is recorded and also streamed live using Facebook. So then we will upload uh, the recording of the, uh, today's webinar on the APDA webinar. So now I would like to start uh, today's webinar. Now I would like to welcome Ms. Ravi Narayaran, our governing council chair of the APDA web. Ravi, the floor is for yours. Thank you so much for your coordination. And thank you, Yumiko. Hello everyone and greetings to the ninth Asia Pacific Water Forums webinar on an extremely important subject. Now, as the region grows in complexity and in economic muscle, industry is playing a bigger and bigger role in the, in, in the development of the region and has a larger and larger footprint on the water sector whether as con consumers or, 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 or users of, uh, of the resource in their processes, or as development of products to help, the, uh, to help conserve and manage water resources, or as to use their own expertise in the management of utilities. So all these three areas are growing in importance. And Therefore, it is entirely appropriate and relevant for us to have a webinar on the subject of engaging industry in sustainable water management through water stewardship. We have Megan McLeod, the CEO of Alliance for Water Stewardship Asia Pacific, who will not only introduce the subject, but present practical examples of, 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 of the concept in action in Japan, China, Indonesia, and Australia. So I'm not gonna spend much more time in, in the niceties of introduction, but plunge straight in and request Megan to take it away. Megan, all yours. Thank you very much, Ravi. And thank you to the Asia Pacific Water Forum for inviting and facilitating um, me to present today. I'm just going to bring up my presentation. Um, to commence. I hope you can all hear me well and see my presentation screen. Yes, so today is Ravi. Yes, you may go. Very good. Uh, as Ravi um, outlined, I'm presenting today on engaging uh, industry in sustainable water management through water stewardship. Uh, and as he outlined, uh, the important need and the water stresses that are, have, are resulting in the need for this important subject have been well um, outlined by other Asia Pacific Water Forum partners and in other webinars. Uh, so I will be focusing on those practical examples 
um, and opportunities and recommendations uh, for upscaling and future growth. Uh, but firstly, um, I personally would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land of the First Peoples of Australia, where I live and work, and I pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging, and acknowledge those who may be with us here today. Uh, we acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded and their connection to land, water and culture are enduring, and that Indigenous knowledge and voices are vital to the sustainable stewardship of our precious water resources in particular for all. Uh, we hope here that we can, that together we can work towards treaty and reconciliation. Uh, so for today's agenda, I'm going to be briefly setting the scene of, for water stewardship. Why water stewardship? How has this come about? Uh, and a bit of detail on what it is. And then um, focusing on who practices water stewardship and examples of water stewardship in practice um, with case studies from across the region. Uh, then I'll be, as the need to uh, scale up water stewardship becomes more important, I'll be looking at some of the motivations and constraints for that scaling up of water stewardship. Um, but how, and then some next steps and recommendations for how we can support and drive greater water stewardship uptake. And then I look forward to uh, your questions and opening up the discussion further. Uh, so to start with a brief background and setting the scene, I'd actually um, first refer back to um, Dr. Mark Smith's recent Asia Pacific Water Forum webinar on operationalizing IWRM. Uh, this was the seventh webinar in the APWF series. And Mr. Smith expertly lays out the background of integrated water resource management uh, from the Mar del Plata conference way back in 1977 to the Dublin principles where the concept of IWRM uh, started to be formed and then leading to it being defined um, in 2000 and the commitment of global governments to the development of IWRM plans in 2002. Uh, now, the development and the history of IWRM is all very important and uh, runs in parallel with water stewardship. Um, however, despite the goals and intentions of our IWRM, um, those water crises have continued to emerge and remain as a top global concern. The World Economic Forum, for example, has reported water-related crises, or now as they use the term natural resource crises, in the top global concerns in terms of likelihood and impact um, uh, for the last 11 years. And this has been further reiterated by the high-level panel on water as recently as 2018 as part of the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. And so it was in this context uh, that the concept of water stewardship was catalyzed. In the very early 2000s, industry and governments alike were looking for ways to opera operationalize IWM, or in other words, better engage industry in water management or on-ground water management. So at that time, an alliance of civil society, government and private sector agencies was formed and the water stewardship concept was developed and then defined as the use of water that is socially and culturally equitable, environmentally beneficial, uh, sustainable and economically beneficial. Achieved through, importantly, a stakeholder inclusive process that involves site and catchment based action. For those that are familiar with the definition of IWRM, you'll see the similarity as water stewardship draws on those principles and the in integral social, environmental and economic values of water. The difference though, or the, dif uh, the differentiator um, between IWRM and water stewardship 
was importantly that IWM developed as a high level top down governance approach to water resource management. Uh, while water stewardship um, is a bottom up user driven approach that aims to support IWRM. Or again, as Dr. Mark Smith outlined, a way to oper operationalize IWRM. So the concept was further developed um, and into a framework for action for how do we achieve the definition of water stewardship um, and the sustainable use of water. Um, and for the Alliance for Water Stewardship, this was defined in the AWS uh, International Water Stewardship Standard, which is a framework, uh, a water management framework that can be applied by any water user in any catchment in the world. And it's built around five steps. They are to gather and understand information about your site and your catchment, to understand your site's water risks, as well as the shared catchment challenges uh, and opportunities um, for action at your site and in your catchment. As we mostly or all know, uh, water stewardship or water is very context specific. Uh, and so we need to understand the context in which we're operating. But by looking beyond just the site and into the catchment where you're operating, um, a site can further build, um, drive collaboration and collective action on water which is going to be needed to address uh, our growing water challenges um, and have an impact at scale. Uh, so once the site has understood uh, its site risks, opportunities and shared catchment challenges and opportunities, uh, it then develops a smart plan for action um, and implements that plan evaluates the plan uh, in the spirit of continuous improvement. So this isn't just a implement once and you're done. It's a continual improvement process. And um, throughout that communicating and disclo disclosing um, transparently with uh, relevant and key catchment stakeholders on your water stewardship performance. Again, the idea of water stewardship is that it can be applied by any water user in any catchment in the world. Uh, and it's uh, context based and aims to achieve five uh, outcomes, uh, five good water outcomes being good water governance, sustainable water balance, good water quality, important water related areas, and safe water sanitation and hygiene for all. And the process helps the sites to identify what are the key water related priorities and challenges in your catchment and how your site can take action to address those towards those good water stewardship outcomes. Uh, other than AWS, there are other um, partners in water stewardship um, that use a sim similar framework or um, but work towards both uh, improved water action at a site um, and in the catchments where they're operating. Um, and water stewardship of the AWS a version of water stewardship is intended to be applied at a site level and can be used as a demonstration of action um, against water and towards corporate uh, water um, goals and targets, for example, um, CDP and other corporate disclosure programs. That is a um, framework to provide evidence of action uh, again at a site level and against those uh, targets. Water stewardship has also been identified as a key uh, recommendation uh, in achieving the goals of the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. So that is a brief background to water stewardship. 
And so we'll now look at um, how water stewardship and particularly the AWS framework is being applied in different contexts. So who practices water stewardship? Um, in Japan, starting uh, in Kumamoto, where the ninth Asia Pacific Water Forum will be held, is uh, water steward Suntory. Suntory is a global beverage and food manufacturer. It has adopted water stewardship and operates two sites in Japan that are certified against the International Water Stewardship Standard, which is a formal recognition of their water stewardship practices. Uh, these two sites, uh, the Santori Kyushu, Kumamoto, and Okudaisen, Bunanomori plants. Looking at the uh, Kumamoto site, um, Santori's corporate commitment is Mizu to Ikuru, which translates to living with water. This is evident in the way Santori approaches important water related areas in the vicinity of their facilities. Uh, so that's looking towards the outcome of uh, healthy, important water-related areas, not just at their site, but in their catchment. At the Kyushu Kumamoto site, Suntory works together with the local government and private landholders to set aside 420 hectares of forest. This forest area is called the Asso Natural Water Sanctuary. Through its Institute for Water Science, Suntory carries out conservation and research efforts in the sanctuary, which plays a critical role in groundwater recharge. Groundwater being a key research water resource, uh, both for the site, but for the city and the community where it's operating uh, and is a key priority for that catchment and its community. So Suntory, through the water stewardship process, uh, is engaging beyond its uh, site um, with its catchment stakeholders to address these key priorities that they've identified. And they're working with rice growers in the Mishikimachi town to maintain 11 hectares of wet paddy fields in the off season. This wet cultivation helps to reduce the use of pesticides and improve biodiversity in that off season. And together with the sanctuary provides an estimated 1.7 megatons of groundwater recharge to those crucial groundwater aquifers that the site is drawing from uh, and other users of the groundwater resource. Uh, Suntory has further recognised the importance of nurturing the next generation of water stewards uh, in continual improvement and long-term sustainability. And it's developed the Mizuiku Education Program for Nature and Water. Uh, this environmental education initiative centres on two activities, an outdoor school of forests and water, where students can learn more about forests and their role in the catchment ecosystem and a teaching program at schools. Uh, this program was initiated in 2004 and to date have had 13,000 participants. Centauri is also working to help business leaders in Japan better understand the importance of water through a collaboration with AWS and are keen to promote and support greater uptake of AWS in Japan. Another sector that's seeing rapid uptake of water stewardship is the information and communications technology sector. A recent survey of major electronics brands in the publication Water Risks in the ICT sector, um, published by, recently published by AWS, found that 80% of microelectronics supply chains are located in areas prone to flooding and extreme weather events. Um, plus, water is a crucial input in making microchips, so it comes as no surprise that the sector has pivoted towards water stewardship to understand its risks um, and how to mitigate those and how to um, better manage its water in its production.
uh, in 2017, the city of Kunshan in China, a major microelectronics manufacturing hub, saw pollutant content in its Wusong River reach critical levels. The situation was drastic enough that a complete manufacturing shutdown was proposed. However, the Kunshan municipal government and the microelectronics sector began looking for alternatives to a complete shutdown. Water stewardship was presented as, uh, as, as such an answer. The water stewardship approach enabled manufacturers uh, in the region to identify their water management strengths and opportunities and make improvements and to demonstrate their good water management practices um, and manage those regulatory um, and le uh, legal risks, uh, those impending legal risks. Some of the improvements are that um, sites such as Flexium uh, in the Kunshan area included implementing on-site water reuse um, and recently providing drinking water um, for community workers such as police and sanitation workers um, and working together with their neighbours to conserve the riverine ecosystem such as planting trees and to prevent riverbank erosion, not just on the site, but in the catchment. This approach proved successful. Not only did stewardship help the site, Flexium, to minimise their environmental impact, it also helped to create water and cost savings and afforded them with a greater social licence to operate. Further, with the support of the municipal government, um, other microelectronic brands and suppliers in Kunshan started adopting water stewardship. And since 2017, nine microelectronics manufacturers in that uh, city have become certified against the AWS standard. Um, this successful collaboration um, from initiation to training and capacity building uh, to the successful demonstration and improvements of uh, water management on site and collectively in the catchment um, led to the Kunshan government uh, announcing incentive uh, payments for more um, industry to adopt water stewardship to help address those key um, industry related uh, water concerns. Another major electronics player, semiconductor giant TSMC, um, operates foundries in Tainan that have attained AWS certification. AB15, one of its certified sites, has achieved sustainable on-site water balance with an 85% recovery rate of process water and 77% recovery rate of plant water use. Uh, TSMC's efficient water recovery systems have also enabled the company to return the recovered water to the local ecosystem. And they've implemented a habitat restoration initiative for Aquitica picta, the aquatic yellow firefly, a native species found on the TSMC site. And I encourage you to go uh, look at the story of the fireflies um, on the TSMC website. Um, and they've also partnered with the local university um, for those biodiversity uh, programs and uh, improvements. So we're starting to see here how water stewardship is being applied by different sites um, to address their local and unique water related priorities and um, identify opportunities. For another example, uh, moving to agriculture uh, and another context in Renmark on the Murray River in South Australia, the Renmark Irrigation Trust has been implementing water stewardship since 2016. Although established in 1887 as an irrigation settlement, uh, the RIT infrastructure now serves over 600 irrigators, covering more than 4,500 hectares throughout the Renmark district. 
But despite decades of engagement and private investment in improved water management, to the point of reaching 98% delivery efficiency um, through their infrastructure, the Trust and its irrigating members have been struggling to demonstrate and distinguish themselves as responsible users in the Murray-Darling Basin, which uh, many of you would be aware has been under great stress and scrutiny and has gone through uh, major regulatory um, changes in the um, development and implementation of the Murray-Darling Basin Plan. But using the AWS standard uh, framework, the RIT have since been able to coherently demonstrate and communicate their positive contributions to water management in the catchment. So not just identifying and benchmarking their operational um, of delivery efficiency of 98% from the river to the farm gate, but it also enabled the collaboration um, with local stakeholders and key catchment stakeholders in a landmark um, agreement with the environmental water holder and the local government, the Renmark Kunga Council, to use the RIT's infrastructure to deliver environmental water to the surrounding wetlands uh, that have been cut off from the river um, due to irrigation development over the past century. And this is having a significant uh, biodiversity and environmental uh, impacts and improvements for the region which is identifying uh, opportunities and benefit flow on benefits to the uh, local community in terms of um, industry opportunities around ecotourism, as well as public amenity um, and health. Uh, as part of its um, water uh, vision and strategy, they're continuing to partner with uh, the local community and the local government in um, ongoing and, and future strategic plans uh, for uh, water management, uh, sustainable water management and a prosperous uh, community. But demonstrating ongoing and positive participation and leadership in uh, catchment governance. Further to on um, continuous improvement and scaling up water stewardship to improve resilience and, and uh, greater sustainability and greater impact uh, in the catchment and the communities where it's operating and in the greater Murray-Darling Basin. The Renmark Karinga Council is supporting and working with their farming, um, their irrigating members to adopt water stewardship at a site, at a farm level. And the Renmark Karinga Council is now working on water stewardship. Um, and we are aiming or hoping that it um, may be the first uh, local government to fully implement the AWS standard and be certified uh, against the AWS standard um, in the coming months. So really showing leadership and demonstrating uh, community, um, collaboration and collective action and vision um, and mission towards a sustainable and resilient community. So um, that's just a few examples of the many um, in the region and around the world of implementations, again, highlighting the, the contextual nature of water stewardship how it enables uh, in any major water users to uh, understand not just their site uh, water management, but um, provide the basis um, for collaboration and for those multiple benefits, those um, social, environmental and economic uh, opportunities. Um, as a snapshot, uh, globally, uh, Water, the AWS standard is being applied globally, as well as other water stewardship programs. But as far as AWS goes, uh, currently there are, I believe, 149 sites certified against the AWS standard globally. 
and a similar number that are registered as working on water stewardship towards certification. So while we the need to engage business in water management to address the world's emerging water crises was identified almost three dec decades ago and has been further stressed over those now past decades, still the rate of change and adoption of collaborative approaches such as water stewardship remains too slow. Although water stewardship has been embraced by a lot a few large multinationals, uh, as well as local uh, organisations, um, to be effective in managing our water demands and water crises, um, we will have to engage a much larger, a very large number of businesses and farmers in all parts of the world. So what are some of the constraints or motivations um, to encourage water stewardship uptake at scale? Uh, there are many of these and there I will provide some further reading um, for you to go away with at the end of this, um, but okay, to Nick, highlight a few. We're almost out of time, so can you begin to wrap up? Yeah, sure. Yep. Um, so at a fundamental level, um, based on some early research, Mr. Michael Spencer of Monash Business School argues that the building, um, that building the sort of collaboration discussed um, or like water stewardship does not come naturally or easily. And he argues that the current culture of water in the, and the water industry um, does not appear to value collaborative behavior except as a last resort during a crisis such as drought. Uh, on the industry side, uh, their industry attitudes have a part to play in this. There appears to be the attitude that government delivers water and they pay a fee and follows the rules. On the resource management and governance side, there's a similar aversion to engagement um, and that their main interest is in top-down technical and regulatory and engineering fixes uh, rather than the collaborative development of social and managerial solutions. So what we need is a shift in the traditional paradigm from um, the traditional engineering and technocratic solutions to collaborative approaches. And where this obstacle has been overcome, there is considerable scope for collaboration, as I tried to uh, demonstrate with the Kunshan and the Remark case studies, uh, where there's been successful collaboration between government, environmental departments, the municipal government, industry, and civil society groups. Generally, in terms of motivations from implementers or users of water stewardship, we've uh, heard that there are a wide range of benefits um, that are uh, specific to the sites and the catchments uh, where it's being implemented. But in general, these include at a corporate level, it enables businesses and other organisations to understand the risks they're facing um, at a site level and in their supply chains and provides a common approach across their whole business. Um, also at a site level, uh, basic, it can basically help to in identify improvements in efficiency, productivity, or cost savings. Um, some less tangible or not so obvious benefits that have been reported is um, helping to grow staff capacity and motivation and morale and even staff retention. And through the collaborative process and aims, it has it helps to strengthen relationships with local stakeholders and build community trust. Uh, so to finish, some uh, recommendations for you, um, the audience and how this might relate to you. Um, so some recommendations for governments need to be alert to the opportunities to connect with water stewardship uh, initiatives that are happening um, in, in, your, um, in your locations. These initiatives are mobilizing stakeholders and are useful mechanisms to support your IWRM implementation and objectives and help to strengthen and expand uh, regulatory compliance and development. 
the minimum standard for water stewardship being legal compliance. Um, for finance institutions uh, and investors, uh, where water users can't afford to invest in water stewardship and water improvements, financial institutions can play a key role in incentivizing sustainable water use. This is especially true for small to medium sized enterprises, which we will need to mobilize and engage at scale, um, and particularly in developing countries. Um, and of course, investors and customer choice can drive uh, water stewardship and incentivize environmental, social and governance action and outcomes. And for you um, and the water industry and professionals in general, while incentives can encourage sustainable water use, the culture of water needs to change so that water professionals um, can bring water customers, industry, government, and other stakeholders into the process. Um, we must shift from an exclusive focus on technical solutions to one that acknowledges the need for behavioural change. This will require financial incentives, and, but also strong collaboration among government, customers, civil society, and industries will, willing to share their practical experience to use water more sustainably. Uh, so there's uh, some notes on some of the resources that I've drawn on and uh, for some further reading, and I encourage you to uh, investigate those more if you can. And that's all for me, Ravi. Thank you very much, you Megan. That was, a, that was a, a bird's eye view of, of, of a subject that is both complex and difficult and encouraging and necessary. So it's everything. But what I got from, from your presentation was that uh, from moving from IWRM as a concept to engagement will mean that th the whole of the SDG 17 gets prioritized, which is collaboration and, and cooperation, which means the whole thing of communication, how to talk to each other, how to reconcile the different needs and priorities of stakeholders, industry, local communities, government, etc., means constant dialogue and a willingness to com compromise. Now, <clears throat> from your experience, Megan, do you think that the UN has got a part to play in trying to see whether this uh, practice, water stewardship, is advancing or retreating or staying still? in their reports, the UN reports and so on, in terms of cover. At the moment, it's coverage, isn't it? But do you think it would be useful to have an indicator for engagement? On engagement specifically or uh, water stewardship? As far as water stewardship is concerned. Yeah, water stewardship is identified by the UN and in the 2030 development agenda um, as a key a uh, tool or a uh, way towards achieving the sustainable development goals and particularly sustainable development goal uh, six. Uh, and its uptake is um, reported on, I believe, under the uh, IWRM um, indicators uh, in the uh, sustainable development goals agenda. Um, as far as the direct um, outcomes or the measuring of engagement, uh, I'm, I must admit I, I'm not well versed enough um, in the UN's uh, coverage of that, I'm afraid, Ravi. Okay, um, but no, no, I just want, I, I think it's important though, isn't it? So, it's, yes. uh, you know, your messages are absolutely necessary for the fourth Asia Pacific Water Summit, which brings the political leaders together, for them to be able to concentrate on these re specific recommendations and to put their political uh, capital behind it so that yes. it gets advanced uh, nationally and internationally. Thank you very, very much. I think uh, I've asked my question. I know we are running a little behind time. 
So Yumiko, do you want to field questions from the floor? Okay, thank you, Ravi. Oh, as first of all, oh, thank you so much for Megan for your presentation, and thank you, Ravi, for your question. So I have received a question about the difference between IWRM and also water stewardship. For example, uh, one question is how is it uh, how is water stewardship is improving framework of IWRM for water management and for more participatory approach? And another uh, question related to the relationship with IWRM is it's, uh, you know, uh, IWL, uh, IWRM is in its institution and participation, which also aim to engage stakeholder and the involvement of public in the water related planning and decision making planning. That's why what makes it different with water stewardship. Thank you, Megan, for your answer. Thank you, Yumiko, and thank you for those, your question. Um, the, the water stewardship is designed and, and has developed in, um, in parallel with integrated water resource management and is not designed to replace it, but to support IWRM. It's recognised that IWRM is uh, an institutional level um, uh, framework and, and it does encourage, is designed to encourage multi-stakeholder participation. Um, but in practice and um, operationalizing uh, those objectives and IWRM, water stewardship provides a practical tool for industry and those water users to engage with um, those institutions and government um, in integrated water resource management. It, the framework, the aid of the water stewardship framework provides uh, the basis for those sites to understand uh, uh, government um, plans and programs that are in place, where they are in place, and how those sites can uh, positively uh, participate uh, with those and engage with them. Uh, and alternatively, where um, IWRM is, is weak or lacking, uh, water stewardship brings those, um, those principles um, from to the to water users and um, provides a basis for a form of bottom up or a way to drive integrated better integrated water um, resource management and water governance um, from a site uh, level. So looking um, guiding sites to understand water governance in the catchment where they're located. Uh, helps them to identify uh, opportunities to strengthen uh, water governance and integrated water resource management from the ground up as well. Uh, so the main difference is um, really that uh, is not the principles um, or the objectives um, between water stewardship and IWRM, but the levels at where it's implemented and used um, from IWRM as a high level uh, and then water stewardship from a practical ground level up. And hopefully they meet and support and um, uh, strengthen each other in, in the middle. Thank you, I hope that answers the question. Thank you, Megan. So another question is coming from the uh, participants from Indonesia. You know, Indonesia is already adopting the national water safety guard standard. So that's why, uh, so how water stewardship uh, standards uh, which you are uh, promoting can supply for the government uh, uh, regulation and policy about the water safety guard? Uh, 
Uh, yes, yeah, so water stewardship is a voluntary uh, approach and it uh, is designed again to, to help sites to one, understand the, the regulatory um, context where they're operating at a minimum to understand those regulatory requirements, um, as well as um, the other pol public policy objectives. So beyond legal compliance, but, but um, additional public policy plans and, and programs. And, uh, and much of our work um, in, in the early stages of implementing water stewardship is, exact, is mapping water stewardship against the existing um, regulations and uh, public policy and programs that are in place, but not to duplicate um, what is already there, uh, but to identify where they overlap and then if and how water stewardship can go further to uh, further strengthen uh, the, the outcomes of um, water management of water policy um, in, in, in any region uh, where it's being implemented. So the idea is, is to support those regulatory programs and uh, further um, how government can, or how these voluntary programs from a site level can help uh, to drive water stewardship at those locations where um, government uh, and public policy is perhaps lacking or um, at, a, at a less mature level. And we have, um, our, we have an AWS partner in um, Indonesia specifically that is also working on, on mapping and the, the regulatory context there and um, collaborating um, with the, the government to promote and support the, the uptake of voluntary uh, water stewardship to further strengthen uh, those outcomes, particularly at basin and landscape levels in the catchments. Thank you, Megan. Can, can I ask a question from chat box? So one anonymous audience is asking, how do you think the water footprint could properly calculate and fairly put the burden by water stewardship? Megan, thank you for ask, responding to the question about the way to... Uh, water yeah. Water. Um, we actually, we use water footprinting tools um, in the water stewardship process to properly understand um, the, the water usage, the total water usage and impacts of um, industry and water users. Um, and particularly we apply this not just at a site level um, where they're operating, where we encourage uh, total um, uh, water monitoring um, and measuring of total use on site, but also from corporate level and brand level and um, in at a supply chain level. So using water footprinting to understand water use uh, and impacts, not just at the site, but throughout the supply and value chain. So part of the, the AWS or the water stewardship uh, framework is also to, to look at embedded water in the products um, coming into your site and identifying uh, water usage in, in those products and uh, the impacts that that could be having in the um, catchments where those products are coming from. So using our so on site to measuring, um, more me accurately measuring your site's water usage and, and in some cases reporting that to your brands or your brand um, or corporate levels have um, a greater understanding of uh, water usage in its, it, its supply and value chain and at a site level looking at the water footprint of products coming into your site. Um, 
and and perhaps the risks and impacts of those in your own supply chains. And the, the water footprinting tool is, is a very useful um, starting point for that for sites. Thank you, Miga. I would like to uh, ask a question from a, a chat box. Then how could you include assist, assessment which affected by trade? Um, I mean, these are very large questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, it might be difficult. So maybe. What, what I suggest is we can collect them and send them to Megan. Yes. I think she can perhaps. Uh, yes. So work. maybe yeah, we are receiving a lot of questions. So we will also respond to uh, this kind of bigger uh, conceptualizing question by email. Then uh, I would like to ask the question about the what what do you think of, what do you think incentivize incentivize stakeholders most how you can um, how water stewardship can um, incentivize incentivize stakeholders most thank you Megan <laughs> uh, thank you that, that's a that's a big question mm -hmm. um, and one that is trying to be understood through uh, much research and um, so I encourage you to read, look at some of those readings that I've uh, provided there. Um, there are different drivers and incentives. I think as Michael Spencer has identified that uh, government um, relationships or collaboration with sites is a key um, driver for water stewardship. Um, well, government recognition of water stewardship and understanding a site's objectives um, in undertaking water stewardship and, and in some cases rewarding and, and recognising that private sector action and engagement. So first, at a basic level, um, particularly government recognition of private sector um, uh, action and efforts on water stewardship. Uh, beyond that, where we start to, where water stewardship is being implemented and we're understanding or seeing uh, those public benefits from water stewardship provides the, the case um, to further incentivize or, or encourage um, water stewardship uptake. So for, for monetary um, incentives, particularly from a government or public policy level, it needs to have demonstrable um, public uh, benefits and, and impacts. Um, but, but through collaboration at, at scale and in the Kunshan example, uh, we are seeing those demonstrable um, outcomes, particularly um, related to water quality improvements uh, and other public benefits. Uh, so um, monetary incentives uh, but uh, are also an option but need to be coupled with those demonstrated uh, or um, measured impacts. Uh, from a brand or corporate or investor level, uh, in investor choices or um, financial support, um, again, is recognising the um, environmental, social and governance objectives, uh, but also targets um, of sites that are implementing water stewardship and um, many financial institutions and investors are starting um, to implement more and more of those uh, environmental, social and governance criteria in their investment decisions. Um, but I would argue, and I think that water stewardship provides a, a good basis um, uh, for, um, for sites and, and businesses to demonstrate those ESG uh, credentials. And so again, um, investor and, uh, and customer um, choices and recognition of 
um, those that ESG objectives and outcomes of water stewardship is also effective um, and would drive further, further uh, motivation for water stewardship. So Yumiko, I think we've come to the end of our questions because we need to wrap up. Yes. Do you want me to say a few words to wrap up or do you want Megan to? Yes, uh, I we would like to ask you, Megan, to deliver final remarks to audience. Then I would like to ask Ravi to wrap up of today's webinar. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Megan? Uh, th uh, thanks, Yumiko, and thanks, Ravi, and thank you all for your, your questions, and I will try to address more of those. Uh, but I'm going to be very brief in wrapping up and just to say that I'm very much looking forward to the fourth uh, Asia-Pacific Water Summit um, on Water for Sustainable Development in Kumamoto next year. Um, but I hope that this has uh, helped um, introduce those who are unfamiliar with water stewardship to the concept and highlighted uh, some of the positive outcomes um, or practices that are being adopted uh, by sites through adoption of the AWS water uh, and water stewardship frameworks, not just at a site level, um, but in the catchments where they're operating. And I encourage all water stakeholders um, to, uh, um, to collaborate on, on water stewardship, to recognize and engage with and collaborate with or in water stewardship um, particularly with those industries that are that are engaging with it. So thank you all. Thank you, Megan. And over to you, Ravi. Thank you. Well, we've just we've just uh, Megan's just presented us with a an overview of a vast and a fascinating topic of water stewardship. She she is obviously not able due to the constraints of time to to supply every last detail, but she's given you an overview. For me, the most important point that she's made was in the last slide, which says, what, is, what can you do about it? So it's about behavior change. It's about the willingness and ability to listen and to engage so that we can all arrive at the common good. That's what water stewardship is about, the common good, so that we all benefit and it's not one at the, at the expense of another. And that requires a behavior change and dropping the individual ego. I think that's a big, big lesson for us, not just as individuals, but as a community as well. And hopefully that will help us provi uh, provide the political incentive to drive our political leaders to policies and practices that will, in, uh, that will cause a better outcome as far as the uh, sustainable development goals are concerned. So thank you very, very much, Megan. Please join me in thanking Megan for her excellent overview. And I hope very much to stay engaged with you and look forward to your participation in the summit. Thank you, thank you very much. I think uh, Yumiko, you have some yes. announcements to make. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Megan, for your uh, responding to all, all difficult questions uh, within this time. And also, I also thank you for Ravi for wrapping up and summarizing uh, today's webinar. I thank you. And I also thank you to all audience to join this webinar. Today's webinars presentation document and also recording will be available from the APW website. You can also see our recording through YouTube. And after the webinar, uh, please take a few minutes to fill out the survey after the webinar. We will also send email to you about the uh, 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 presentation document and recording by email. Then you can also access to the questionnaires, the survey through the e Email. I thank you so much for your cooperation to fill out the survey. Now I would like to ask. Uh, I would like to introduce the next APW webinar. The tenth APW web webinar welcome Water Integrity Network and their colleague, and they will talk about the strengthening integrity 
crucial in ad advancing water security in Asia Pacific. Then, um, there are a webinar. We'll share the standards, framework, tools, and good practice for strengthening the integrity with the water security sec water, sec water sector from policy to implementation level. The next webinar will recommend messages on what is required for mainstreaming integrity within the water sector and the, what are the integrity standards to attract climate funds. So we cordially appreciate you to join next APW webinar continuously. Thank you so much for your participation of today's webinar and see you all for next web AP the webinar. Thank you so much. I thank you, Megan and Lavi. Thank you for all for thank joining. You very much. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye. Now, yes, webinar is adjourned. Thank you.